the Booth Centre have put together this short film to share some of the experiences, both good and bad, of people staying in shared emergency accommodation across Manchester. We hope this film shows why we need to have in place the agreed minimum standards. My name is Maria, I work for the British Red Cross and we have been supporting one of the emergency shelters this winter in Manchester. I think uh, uh, there, is, there are two main aspects of the emergency shelter. One is very good and is basically a life-saving provision because especially during extreme weather, uh, taking away free people from the streets when the temperatures are below zero, that's really life-saving and uh, uh, I want to stress it quite importantly. Uh, the other aspect, however, is because uh, it's an emergency shelter, the provision is, uh, is very basic uh, and uh, uh, the people that we worked with uh, were quite stressed uh, most of the time because uh, they didn't felt necessarily safe uh, in sleeping with people that they didn't know. My name's Tony and I uh, attend the Booth Centre. It was not good, it was so cold being in the accommodation and it's even though you were sleeping even though you was inside it's like you were sleeping outside on the street it was just so cold and no locks on the doors people could walk in and out of your room there was just no privacy full of drugs alcohol and it's in your face 24 7 you see people drinking taking drugs it's a pressure that I just didn't like I just wanted to be out and in my own place or being a safer place. My name is Robin. My other experience was the girl set up was right next door to the boy set up and in the boy set up there was six boys in there and it was all you could hear all night was boys being boys and being dead loud and shouting and screaming and partying. So it made me feel very scared and very vulnerable and it just made me feel upset because there was no one there to support me. As a woman staying in the emergency accommodation, it made me feel low. I had no support around me, and whereas the men had each other and they could go out and they had wider connections. As a woman, you're just stuck in one room and you're scared alone. In emergency accommodation for gay people, it's we don't want to go into it because it's just drama for the day you go into the day you leave. You get hassled constant. Hey, my name is Bernard. I share all with about 15 people are all inside the church. 15, 16 people. And then 11 o'clock, the light goes down. Sometimes I want to read my books. Cannot even read books, you get me? I want to read my books past, way past 11. But as soon as they come in, the staff's there, coming, oh, Reverend said we have to close the light, bam. How can I read my books? Hi, I'm Dave. I'm a psychological therapist working with depression and anxiety. Shared accommodation um, is a short-term option. It's a good thing in that people can get off the streets. The danger is that people have a bad experience and don't go back. Um, Long-term, people need their own space. They need for, for their own mental health, they need to know that they can go to a room, to, to a home, and lock the door and shut the door and be with themselves. Hi, I'm Ros Hughes. I'm the nurse with the homeless team at Urban Village Medical Practice. So for people um, staying in emergency accommodation, um, I've noticed that it can have an impact on the person's physical and mental health and well-being. So in terms of physical health, there is risk of um, spread of infection, sort of hepatitis, um, there's potential risk of TB in shared accommodation. And more recently, we've had higher numbers of, of people with um, wound infections, um, and that infection spread really easily in shared accommodation where people are in close contact with one another. And in terms of mental health and well-being, um, many people don't want to be or stay in shared accommodation with other people. Um, they might have had really bad experiences of this in the past. Um, a lot of people want a room that they can lock the door, that they can call that their own, that they know they can keep themselves and keep their belongings safe. Hi, my name is Abdullah Bakr. Uh, I live in an, an emergency accommodation. 
I've been on my own accommodation right now for nearly one year, uh, which is I had good experience about it. Before I came here, to be honest, I have like a little bit experience of other accommodation, which I found it like not really safety, especially on my own stuff, on my own belongings. Sometimes like we got, we don't have the uh, lockers, you know, to keep them safe. Uh, most of them are noisy. So what I'm saying, why I live right now in Zao accommodation is really nice, brilliant. I'm Jerry, living in emergency accommodation. When I first went there, it felt right, it felt comfortable there for me. Comfortable, yeah. yeah. In, in the accommodation, we put our stuff away, so, so everything we have is put away safe and sound, no problem. My name's Adeline, and I currently work for an emergency accommodation in Manchester. We, we offer emergency beds. Uh, we're part of a bed every night, and uh, so we offer uh, up to 30 beds every night, uh, and we assess people obviously uh, suitability and their needs and we offer not just bed we offer shower uh, laundry facility uh, free dinner or evening meal free breakfast in the morning uh, but also there are some activities so in the evening if you if you if you go to our center uh, there will be people having evening meal together they sometimes a uh, community is like a big family and we help we try to help people to move on back on their feet yeah, hi, my name's Gadda. Yeah, my experience is sleeping in accommodation wasn't very good. Uh, it was, sharing with a lot of people is not very good, but I had a bad situation where someone took an overdose there and seeing a mate died in the past brought it all back, so I didn't want to stay there. But it's not just that situation, it's not having privacy, everything what goes with it, all the people in one room, you know what I mean? It's, it's just not a safe environment. It's not. It's not an happy environment, it's not, it's not an environment you've got to be in really. Yeah, I would say it packs in on my mental health because I had to go back on the streets again and bringing that up, I mean me, uh, the, the guy who took the overdose, it brought it all back up, so yeah, it did pack on my mental health, I would say, yeah. You put a gang of people who's all got mental health issues, drug addictions, and you put them all in one big room, that's not very safe in my eyes. When you walk in the streets or finding somewhere in a doorway, I feel safer in that in my eyes that way. That's how I feel it's safer it is on the streets and being in there. Because if you had your own room, you'd be able to just go in your own room and lock it, you know what I mean? If you had aid violence or whatever, you can go in your room and lock it. If you felt uh, angry yourself or you felt in distress yourself, whatever, you can go in your room and lock it. You can put your stuff in your room and lock it. So single rooms are a lot better than these shared rooms. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring them in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in the minimum standards. Let's all work together to bring in this minimum standard.